In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, our Father, we thank you for teaching us that we live the eternal life now. That eternal life is an intimacy, a relationship now with our God Almighty. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. Help us to live for Jesus and for others. To him who sits upon the throne of God and to the Lamb, be the blessing, honor, and glory, and power forever and ever, ever, forever and ever. And for the living creatures said, Amen, while the elders bowed down and worshiped. <clears throat> and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Jesus said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Secondly, we need to know ourselves spiritually and also others. Help us, God our Father, to know ourselves and others spiritually. Anyone in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things have passed away and become new. Thank you, Father, for this revelation. We make this prayer to you, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, my sisters and brothers, a warm welcome to each one of you today. We have been studying on this topic of eternal life and I believe today we are always on the, on the 16th or 17th episode, our series of this talk of eternal life and every day the Holy Spirit is teaching us something new or another. So just quickly, let me, you know, recap to you yesterday what we learned. We were studying on uh, John chapter 10. And we saw yesterday that since the people at that time did not understand the parable Jesus was telling them. What, what was the parable he was telling them? He was telling them of the parable of the shepherd and the sheep. He was telling them about a relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. And my sister and brothers, the job that the Holy Spirit would do when the Holy Spirit would come is what Jesus set about to do. He began to explain the parable to, the, to, the, to those people there, what this parable really meant. He began to do the job of the Holy Spirit. And the people then, my brothers and sisters, could not understand, you know, spiritual truths since they did not have the Holy Spirit in them. They were still not born again. Jesus had still not gone to the cross. Only Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power he was able to preach the gospel. He was able to teach to them. But because the recipients were not spiritually, you know, uh, were, were, were spiritually, they were spiritually retarded. They were not born again. They couldn't understand spiritual truth. They were natural people. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. That's what we saw yesterday. Because they were natural people who did not have the Holy Spirit, Jesus now set about to do the job of the Holy Spirit by explaining to them the parable. You know, Jesus was saying to those who came, you know, later on we also heard, he says, I am the door, he said. He said, all those who came before me, they were thieves and robbers. Now, why were he, did he say that those who came before him were thieves and robbers? Do you think that people like John the Baptist were thieves and robbers? Do you think Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Amos, then, you know, Malachi, all those, were they thieves and robbers? He was not talking about those. He was talking about those religious leaders. He was talking about the Pharisees. He was saying that these people who came and who were custodians of the law, they were thieves and robbers because they were not sent by God. They were not sent by God. They were thieves and robbers. They had actually assumed positions in, in, the, in, in the synagogues and taken the you know religious uh, positions, but they were not having intimacy with God. They were not having a relationship with God. They were not being directed. The Spirit of God was not even giving them any inspiration. And you know, my sister and brothers, we know today that only those who are born again and have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, they can only go about and start sharing the word of God because they will be sharing the word anointed by the Holy Spirit. 
You know, I want to just take you quickly to a, a few scriptures because we need to understand, you know, why it is so important for us first to be born again and then we need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to take you to Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. And then I'm going to take you to a scripture from today's gospel passage from John chapter 3. These two passages I'm going to take you just to give you a recap so that we can move forward in today's teaching. So first one will go to Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. That verse says that um, Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. God was with him. God was with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He had anointed him with Holy Ghost and with power. And therefore, Jesus now was able to preach the gospel. He was able to teach the people. And once he taught them and once he, you know, preached to them, he was able to confirm the word that he taught with signs and wonders because the anointed Holy Spirit brought about the, 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 the manifestation of God's glory. So remember, Acts chapter 10 verse 38 is, was only saying to us that because of the anointing, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, Jesus now went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And today, my sister and brothers, because we are born again, because we have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God lives on the inside of us. We are not people who are ruled by our emotions and feelings. We are not people who are ruled, you know, by circumstances, but we are ruled by the Holy Spirit. So remember, when the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of us, when we are ruled by the Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit is the one who's the captain of our life. He takes over and he now allows us to manifest God's glory on this planet Earth. Let's see that. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So remember my dear sisters and brothers God was with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now many of you will say he was God Almighty but he had come on this planet Earth as man. So in his spirit, he was like God, but he still needed the Holy Spirit. He needed the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit in him was the one that was manifesting God's glory and destroying the works of the devil. So everybody was oppressed of the devil. The devil was ruling the earth. Jesus, because of the anointing, Jesus, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, was going about and destroying the work of the devil. Now, I want to take you after this to today's gospel passage. If all of you have read today's gospel passage, you will realize that today's passage is from John chapter 3, verses 31 to 36. John chapter 1, verses 31 to 36. And I want you all particularly to keep your focus on verse number 34. John chapter 3, verse number 34. Let's read that. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives not the spirit by measure unto him. Look at what this verse is saying. And I want you all to pay attention to verse number 34. It says, For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. Only those who have been sent by God, they will speak the word of God. For God gives not the spirit by measure unto him. God doesn't give the spirit like a miser. God is not giving the spirit. He's, he's giving it like a ration. He is giving the person an abundant spirit. He's giving him the full spirit. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, only those who have been sent by God speak the words of God. 
Now I want you to check out my brothers and sisters. I want you to check it out. You know, when you hear somebody speak the word, when you hear somebody pray, when you hear somebody open their mouth, you can immediately recognize in the spirit, if you are connected in the spirit, their relationship with Almighty God. You know, when a person opens their mouth, you can understand when they speak, whether you, because of your relationship with the Lord, if they are truly sent by God. Remember all these prophets, John the Baptist, Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, Malachi, all the, uh, all the Old Testament prophets, they were sent by God. But today in the New Testament, everyone who believes in Jesus, everyone who is born again, now becomes a recipient of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we are all sent in order to speak the word of God. Does this encourage you, my sisters and brothers? Does it encourage you? Remember, in the old covenant, there were people who were chosen by God in order to be his spokesman and spokeswoman in order to tell the people because they were assigned as prophets of God. But in the new covenant, in the New Testament, God has not chosen anybody. God has no favorites. God shows no partiality. The moment you believe in Jesus, the moment you surrender your life to him, you make him the Lord and master of your life, you are born again and you are now a recipient of the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you also become a spokesman for the, for the Lord. That's why we are all ambassadors of our Lord Jesus Christ. That this verse number 34 is saying, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God gives not the spirit by measure unto them. He doesn't ration the spirit. He gives you the full anointing. He gives you the full spirit. The same spirit, the same faith of Jesus Christ has been planted inside of you and inside of me the day we were born again. Isn't that so encouraging, my brothers and sisters? And therefore, those who are not born again, those who have not been baptized by the Holy Ghost and are trying to do kingdom work are thieves and robbers even today. Let me say this again. It's probably a statement that will shock many of you. But let me tell you one thing, my brothers and sisters. This is what the Lord is saying to us in John chapter 3, verse 34. He's saying those who are not born again and those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and are still trying to do kingdom work, they are actually thieves and robbers. Even today, they will never be able to bring anyone into the kingdom of God. They will bring people to, 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 do, to do religion. They will bring people to do rituals. They will bring people to be legalistic, but they will never be able to bring people into intimacy and relationship with God. And therefore, therefore, each one of us, without fail, when we receive the Lord and we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we are simply called to become the spokesman of God and share the gospel to everybody, especially to those who are deceived into thinking that they are saved. There are many people today in the body of Christ who think they are saved. They are absolutely deceived. They are absolutely misled because they don't know the truth. They don't even know. They are not even born again. They are not even baptized by the Holy Spirit. There are other people out there who have other faiths who don't even have heard who Christ is, what he did for them. And therefore, we are also called to reach out to such people so that when they hear the good news, they also can enter the kingdom of God. So remember, my sister and brothers, what we spoke yesterday was you and I have a great responsibility. And what is this responsibility? That now that we are born again, now that we have the spirit of God, the spirit of God is the captain of our life. He's going to teach us as much as we are going to be faithful and committed to the word. And as we grow in that intimacy, as we grow into that relationship, now we will be able to share this intimacy, this love, this secret, these recipes, these revelations to others 
and also bring them into the kingdom of God. Are you with me? Are you with me, my sister and brothers? Remember, this topic on eternal life is something that you can't go and preach on the pulpit unless you and I are personally experiencing eternal life. I hope you are all with me on this. Remember, my sister and brothers, eternal life is not something that you're going to preach on the pulpit to somebody. What is eternal life? Eternal life is a life that you and I first need to live. And if we are living that, we are going to finally live an abundant life. We are going to live the whole life. We are going to come to this today. We are going to come to John 10, 10, I believe. But let us go today. Let's move on further to John. Yesterday we started, I believe, chapter verse number 8, right? So today let's go to John chapter 10, verse number 9. Before we go to verse number 10. So John chapter 10, verse number 9. That's our, that's our passage for today. Let's reflect on verse number 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. So this verse number 9, my brothers and sisters, you know, here in verse number 9, Jesus was explaining the parable of what he had started in John chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Let me go to verses 1 and 2. Because if you go to verse number 9, you will see where he started off in verses 1 and 2. John chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. So let's read verses 1 and 2 again. Very, very, <coughs> I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus was saying, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now let's go to verse number 9. Knowing these two verses, what does he say in verse number 9? He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and, and, and out and find pasture. Again, you know, if you go to Psalm 23, the Lord is saying, he is the good shepherd. He takes us to green pastures. That's exactly what our God has done. He came and brought his son, Jesus. He sent his son, Jesus, into this world. Jesus finished everything for you and me on the cross. Now the grace of God is available for you and me. And now as we begin to believe his word, we are appropriating the grace and we are able to go in and out and enjoy the abundant life. We are able to enjoy the abundant life. We are able to find pasture. You know, my sister and brothers, no one can come into the Father's presence, into the sheepfold, except through Jesus Christ. And we saw that, you know, when Jesus spoke in John chapter 14, verse number 6, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the door. He is the door through which we can enter in. And when we enter in him, through him by believing in him, we will able to come and sit on the lap of the father because the father now looks at you and me as the charitu. He looks at me, you and me as the beloved, not because you and I are good enough, not because we are worthy, not because, you know, we have done something great, but because of the blood that Jesus shed for you and me and you believed this blood, you were cleansed and washed by his blood and you became the beloved son, you, become, you became the beloved daughter of our Lord, of our heavenly father. What a wonderful thing, my sister and brother. You know, if you begin to learn the scriptures like this, it's not just you not know, trying to learn it mechanically. You know, everything in scripture is all about a relationship. What did the father do? The father sent his son. The son paid for you and me. Now, you don't need to do anything. You need to put your faith in what Jesus did. When you put your faith in what Jesus did, the Heavenly Father accepts you in the Beloved. You are the charity of the Heavenly Father. You are the Beloved of the Heavenly Father. Keep believing in the name Jesus. Keep looking at the author and finisher of our faith. You enter into intimacy with God. 
you begin to receive the holy spirit who now directs you to god he takes gives you more and more revelation and because you have entered only through jesus through that door you can go in and find pasture you can receive the abundant life and you can receive the whole life in fact the very next verse is what we are going to study in detail today john chapter 10 verse number 10 let's read that john chapter 10 verse number 10 the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly now you know you know when you read this verse there are so many things in this verse many of us are very familiar with this verse this is a verse that many preachers quote many of us have been you know know it by heart the thief comes to kill steal and destroy jesus came to give us abundant life But you know, my sister and brothers, when you look at verse number ten in connection with eternal life, when you look at it with respect to eternal life, John chapter ten, verse number ten, should be like you know, like the like the lottery ticket which you have won. John chapter ten should be like the lottery ticket, or it should be like you know, your your blessings are pouring upon you. Because if you understand John chapter ten, verse ten. it is an indication that you are already beginning to experience eternal life you know my brothers and sisters look at this verse again the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy this is king james english but in actual word it is the thief comes to kill to steal and to destroy but jesus says i am come that they might have life they might have zoe life again they want to learn about that as well and that they might have it more abundantly you know this 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 entire verse it eliminates all theology down to its absolutely simplest form you know if you are learning theology and philosophy and all the stuff that they teach This verse number ten just eliminates all your theologies and philosophies and arguments, and just brings it down to a very simple level, absolutely on a basic level. If it is bad, if it is bad, it is from the devil. If it is good, it is from God. Period. That's exactly what this verse is saying. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. I have come so that you may have life and have it to the fullest. so you need to check your life my brothers and sisters and, and and realize this if anything good comes in your life it has to be from god if anything bad comes in your life it's coming from the devil it's not coming from god god is not the author of bad things god is not the author of sickness god is not the author of using the tools of hell god is not going to bring you know some sickness into your life or give you a heart attack or give you certain things it is the enemy that is going to give you all these things it is the enemy who comes to kill to steal and to destroy so remember heart attack cancer covid 19 omicron tommy chrome johnny chrome all the chromes are not coming from heaven they are coming from the pits of hell and therefore brothers and sisters if it is good it is from god if it is bad it is from the devil the devil comes to steal to kill and to destroy but jesus came to give you and me life life in abundance i don't know i don't know my brothers and sisters as you reading verse number 10 as i'm sharing this with you i am simply excited about john chapter 10 verse 10 because i know anything good that comes in my life anything good that is happening in my life it is happening because god is allowing that good to happen and many people will say god allows bad thing to happen again religious spirit god doesn't allow bad things to happen but when bad things happen he can turn it around for good i want to show you that because that we need to kill some of our own old pandas you know there are a lot of old pandas god is allowing bad things to happen so that we will become better people he doesn't need to use the tools of hell let us go to roman chapter 8 verse number 28 and i want to show you if it is good it is good from god if it is bad it is from the devil and yet if it is bad god is still going to put you take you out of that situation because that's exactly what the scripture says in roman chapter 
verse number 28. Can we go there, please? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Many people do not read the second part, to them who are called according to his purpose. They will only go to the first part and they'll say, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. You know, my sister and brothers, the, the, the first part is the, is the terms. The second part is the condition. When only you are born, only for those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose, all things will turn for good. You know, you know my sister and brothers, when does a person can say that they really love God? When can a person really say that they love God? You know, if this was Romans chapter 8, verse 28, with the Holy Spirit inspired, uh, you know, Paul to write, he says, and we know, he says, we know, he's, he's not saying that, you know, maybe he's not saying, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So when are you going to say that you love God? Let me show you what Jesus said about loving God. Let me show you when a person really loves God. John chapter 14, verses 21 and 23. Let's only go to 23. I don't want to take too much of time on this. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse number 23. We will know who are the people who really love God. In Jesus' own words, he doesn't want lip service. He wants people who actually love him in, in deed. So this is the word that Jesus is talking about in John chapter 14, verse number 23. Jesus answered and said unto them, unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. Praise God! Praise God! So Jesus is saying, I don't want lip service. Don't tell me that you love me because you do a lot of prayers and you read a lot of scriptures and you read a lot of Bible stories and you know, you're coming to Bible class. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. If a man, okay, my dear sisters, don't be upset. If a man and a woman love me, they, they will keep my words. They will keep my words. Means if you really love the Lord, you're going to obey his word. Now, it's, it, there's a difference between obedience in the old covenant and there is a difference between obedience in the new covenant. In the old covenant, my brothers and sisters, people obeyed the Lord. You know, they did what the law said, but they did it more out of, you know, compulsion. They wanted to do it so that they would receive the blessing. There was no grace. It was all self-effort. So they had to obey in order to get God to bless them because according to the law, all those who obeyed the law would be blessed. All those who disobeyed the law would be cursed. You can go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 to 14 and 14 to around 50 odd. You will see the, obedience, the blessings for obedience, the blessing for disobedience. So there was a different type of obedience in the old covenant, which was all based on self-effort in order to receive from God. So it was not what God did. It was all about my self-effort. But in the new covenant, what is the obedience, my brothers and sisters? Am I going to obey like the old covenant saints, like people are taught in the church today? Oh, you have to fast, you have to pray, you have to go to church, you have to read your Bible, you have to listen to this. You have to do a lot. Sorry, that's not what obedience is called in the new covenant. You know, my sister and brothers, why do you obey? Because of the love that Jesus has shown for you and me on the cross. He has taken your debt, he has taken your place on the cross. He has become a substitute. He shed his blood for you and me, which we should have been yours and mine. We should have been punished and he took it. Now, because I understand what he did for me, what the love he showed me, I am obeying. I want to do what his word says, not by compulsion, not to receive anything, but because of his love for me. So when I experience his love and I understand his love, I am receiving the grace of God. I'm receiving everything that Jesus has completed for me on the cross. You know, my sister and brothers, please listen to this. Many a times, because of our wrong understanding, because of, you know, what has been told to us, we begin to think that, you know, we have to do something in order to impress God and do something about God. I have to read the Bible. I, 
You know, when you have an intimacy with somebody, you're not going to do it because you have to do it. You're going to do it out of love. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves people who are interested to have fellowship with him. If you are just coming to Bible class, you're reading your Bible, you're muttering some scriptures just because you want to get it done for the day and then you want to do your own thing, better not to do it. You know why? Because, you know, my sister and brothers, when somebody does it, he does it more because he wants to do it according to the law. He wants to just feel, oh, Lord, today I have finished my quota. I have finished praying. I have read the Bible. I have come to Bible class. I have done my part so I can spend time to do and enjoy my, myself and do and, and, you know, love my own pleasures. No, 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 no. It's not that. The moment I wake up to the time I go to bed, the Holy Spirit is the captain of my life. I have understood the love of God. I have understood the grace of God. And I'm only appropriating that grace because of that relationship that I have. It's not only a relationship with God when I go to church or when I come to Bible class or when I read my Bible. It is a 24-7, 365 days relationship. You know, my sister and brothers, let's go back to John chapter 10, verse 10. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 10, verse number 10. You know, this is, I, I really want to spend a little bit of time here and I want you all to understand this is like the foundation. If you get John 10, 10 in your spirits properly and perfectly, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's simply going to take eternal life and your intimacy with God at a different level. Look at what it says. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. You know, the thief that is mentioned here, look at this, the thief comes, he says, you know who's the thief? The thief mentioned here is specifically speaking of the thieves and robbers of John chapter 10, verse number eight. You know, John chapter 10, verse number eight are the, are the people who claim to be God's messengers but they were not messengers of God. You know, today, my sister and brothers, I hope you are really opening your ears of your heart because remember, there are a lot of thieves and robbers in the body of Christ today. Lots and lots of thieves and robbers. They are not, they are claiming to be, you know, God's messengers. They are claiming to be people of God. They are claiming to be, you know, people who can represent God correctly. But actually speaking, they are not. They are not. They, were, they have been selfish. They have been stealing, they have been cruel, they have been killing, and they have been destructive, they have been destroying. In contrast to the good shepherd who was selfless, kind, and laid down his life for you and for me who are his sheep. I, I don't know, brothers and sisters, as I'm sharing this with you, I don't know if any if, if the Holy Spirit is really stirring you up. I really hope right now that you begin to understand this good shepherd on, in contrast, he was selfless. He was so kind, so compassionate when he walked on this earth and he still is. And he laid down his life for you and he took your place and my place on the cross. With, in, 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 in contrast, there are people today in the body of Christ who are only suckers. They have this throne, they have their chairs, for people to serve them. They want people to serve them. They want people to polish their shoes. They want people to run errands for them while they sit on the throne and give orders. Which kingdom do they belong to? Which kingdom do they belong to? Jesus said, if you really are my sheep, you will go out and serve because you are not, I was not sent to serve. To, you know, I was not sent here to, to, to basically be served. I came here to serve. If you are a sheep and you are connected with the chief shepherd, then you will not be looking for people to serve you. You will be going out and serving others. You will be following the master. You will be kind. You will lay down your life for others because you are taking orders, not from human leaders. You are taking orders from the high command. And the high command says, live a selfless life. Lay down your life. Be kind to others. Die to yourself so that you can bring them into a relationship with the one whom you believe in. You want to bring them into a relationship with the master to whom you have allegiance to. You know, my sisters and brothers, I, I, I really hope 
that this verse is really stirring us up today because you know what if you understand today in the body of christ we are almost at the last days again 1 john chapter 4 tells us in the last days there'll be lot of false prophets going there'll be lot of false messengers of god that will be going there'll be lot of people who will be preaching the you know a prosperity gospel without the cross without dying to self they'll only be talking about you know you get your house blessed you'll have lot of money in your bank you'll have a big big pack pad bank balance you will have a good job you will have name and fame is that the kingdom that jesus has called us for not at all he's called us to you know preach a kingdom wherein we are going to be selfless we are going to lay down our lives and you know my sister and brother listen to this very carefully this verse in john chapter 10 verse 10 is today still the acid test for discerning false messengers messengers of god you know if you really want to know who's the true messenger of god and who's a false messenger of god this verse number 10 john 10 10 is like the litmus test or acid test or sulfuric acid test i don't know whatever test whether you want to make it a nuclear test i don't know whatever test you want this verse is the acid test for discerning for you and me to discern the false messengers of god today as well as the demonic inspiration behind them remember false prophets will come with demonic inspiration because they are not controlled by the holy spirit they are not controlled by the lord you know the devil steals he kills and he destroys but people of god people who are god's i mean god's ministers they are actually propagating zoe life the life of god that's what jesus said i am come that they might have life you know this word life in john chapter 10 was 10 it is talking about zoe life you know my brother says zoe life is a life in the absolute sense it is a life of god it is a life of god you know you you cannot have a life which is in an earthly life okay i got a good house i got a good car we are all having our meals together everything is working so fine and you know i'm just living happily that's not a god kind of life that's not a god kind of life you know my brothers this is the greek word that was translated life here in john chapter 10 it means zoe z o e and it means life a god kind of life as i said to you it is a it is a it is a, you know life in the in, it's a, like in, a, in an absolute sense it is a god kind of life there is no such thing as you know different other life you want to live god kind of life you have to live zoe life and everyone every single person who is breathing has life in the sense of physical existence you know there are so many people who don't know christ for example there are people in different parts of the world who have never heard the gospel are they not living are they not breathing are they not eating their breakfast lunch and dinner are they are they not going about their normal activities oh yes they are doing all that there is a physical existence but only those listen to this only those who receive jesus as their lord god and savior and then the baptism of the holy spirit can experience life as god intended to be the soy life you know you know you know you know my sister and brothers i i i i really want to i really want to you know stress on this one thing many times people think that because you know people have got a big car and big houses they are not coming to church they are not going to the lord they are away from the church they don't have any relationship with the lord they are not serving in the kingdom yet they are doing so well then people begin to think lord we are actually coming to church we come to bible class we are not going to the stock exchange at this time we are coming to listen to your word we are not going and playing football or you know watching television or watching games we are coming to hear the your word how come those people who are absolutely living in you know away from you how come they are prospering and we are still you know we don't even have sometimes even we are always going on bus number 11 we don't even have our own car we are going by bus number 11 we are walking everywhere to every place and then the thought comes to yourself am i really living an abundant life am i living a god kind of life am i living the zoe life is this the life that god has called me to live you know my sister and brothers listen to this very carefully the life of god is not waiting you know it's not awaiting people in heaven but it is a present 
tense situation. It is a present possession of every born again believer of the Lord Jesus Christ in their spirits, not in their flesh. Okay, let me put it to you differently. You know, my sister and brothers, there is a spiritual world and there is a physical world. Remember, the physical world is ruled by Satan. The spiritual world is ruled by God. So remember, when the devil wants to, you know, propagate his kingdom, how is he going to propagate his kingdom? Through the senses, through what you hear, see, taste, smell, through the physical world, because the physical world is where he has a control on. But when you don't focus on the physical world and you focus on the unseen world through the word, everything of God is not in the physical. It is in the spiritual. It is in your spirit. And therefore, brothers and sisters, believers can release the Zoe life and enjoy it now without losing their natural lives. How? By finding the supernatural life through the power of the Holy Spirit through intimacy with God. You know, you know, you know, let me, let me just, you know, let me not take too much time on this, but let me tell you something. You know, the way believers, my brothers and sisters, lose their lives is to deny any thoughts, emotions, or actions that are contrary to the word of God, which is contrary to the word of God. You know, the moment you begin to not be controlled by your emotions and feelings, but everything is ruled by your sixth sense, not the five senses, but the sixth sense, that is by faith, according to God's word, you are drawing out from your spirit the abundant life, the wholeness of God. Remember, about a week ago, we learned about the wholeness of God from Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. The wholeness of God, the fullness of God is already inside of us. And you know, when we, when we line our thoughts and emotions and actions with all the instructions of God's word, then only we will find this Zoe life manifest in our bodies and souls as well. You know, you know, my sisters and brothers, let me tell you something. It is very, very dangerous to compare ourselves with unbelievers because we, we look only at the physical world and we say, oh my, they have so much of money. They've got so much of name. They've got so much of fame. They've not only got one car. They've got a fleet of cars. You know, they've got not one watch. They've got different watches. They don't have one goggle. They've got different goggles. They don't have one wig. They've got 10 wigs. So they've got everything, you know, in, in multiplication. But the problem is, my sister and brothers, when you begin to compare yourself with unbelievers having all the material wealth, you are actually denying or not acknowledging what you already have. You have Zoe life. You have more than what they have, but you don't have it in the physical realm. You have it in the spiritual realm. And you should know the formula by now how to take it out of the spiritual realm and still be prosperous than those people because you and I have Zoe life, the wholeness of God on the inside of us. So how do we do that? By, you know, having this line of thoughts, our emotions, our actions, our feelings to line up with the word of God. And when we line it up with the word of God, we are able to draw out from our spirits. We are able to draw from that limitless supply and we are able to live the abundant life, the whole life that God has promised us. You know, my sister and brothers, let me, let me end today's uh, reflection with this one important thought for each one of us. Right now, as you are listening, many of you at this stage, you are coming to Bible class. You're coming to the word of God every day. Some of you are probably, you know, you come off and on. You come once in a while, depending. Maybe you're listening to the YouTube. You're still very much involved in this retreat. You may be at different position of your life right now. Maybe some of you are having a problem in your health, maybe in your finances, maybe your marriage, maybe your relationship. Maybe you're, you know, you're just hoping against hope something good will happen in your life. And you're just looking at it in the, you know, you're just looking at it, just hoping that things will happen. But I want to tell you one thing. If you understand that the wholeness of God, the completeness of God, the Zoe life, the abundant life is already on the inside of you. From today, just line up your every thought, your every emotion, your every action with respect to the word of God. And when you begin to do that, you will simply draw out from your spirit, from this limitless supply. It will begin to manifest not only in your life, it will not only manifest in your body, but it will manifest in your mind, in your soul. And you will begin to see the glory of God 
every single day of your life. So intimacy is not just intimacy to say, hi God, I've come here to have time with you. I'm spending for a sign 46, 10, be still and know the presence of God. I will spend this time. God had a great time with me. I had a great time with the Lord. But there has to be some fruit of that relationship. And the fruit of that relationship, my sisters and brothers, is abundant life, is the whole life. God wants his children to be blessed. But the problem today in the body of Christ, there are more beggars in the body of Christ because they don't know the truth and they are just begging God to do something about it. When if they really know the truth and they know that they are born again and they have the wholeness of God and they have this Zoe life and they have the abundant life already on the inside, they only need to be shown how to write the check, how to sign the check with the word of God, line up their thoughts, their thinking, their actions, their emotions, everything with the word and keep drawing, keep withdrawing and live this life to the fullest. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, my sisters and brothers. Praise God. So let's end today's reflection by having our closing prayer today. Brother Maxwell, let's do the closing prayer, please. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Precious Heavenly Father, I thank you, I praise you, I glorify your name. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that as we gather today in this platform, my God, what an amazing journey yes. it has been of eternal life, what Brother Vincent and Sister Melanie has taken us through, my God. Father, the transition we are making from the law to the new covenant, to understand and to receive the Holy Spirit from the relationship that what we have gained through eternal life to forgive one another and to understand the Zoe kind, the God kind of love. Father, let us not come to you as beggars, but we are the heirs of your kingdom, my God. Let us come with confidence, my God, with our chins high, and ask what is rightfully ours, my God. We do not look at the flesh, my God, but we look at the supernatural, that what you have in store for us, my God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that John 10, 10 years, that you have come to give us life and life of abundance, my God. And I thank you, Lord, that let us live this life, not one day at a time, not few days, my Father, but every day we live and breathe this life, my God. I thank you, Father, that here we are nurturing our, not only our souls, our spirit, but we are collecting spiritual currency, my God, the heavenly currency, my God. And let us never take this time, my God, for granted. I thank you, Lord, that all our brothers and sisters who, year, who come your day in and day out, my God, to be filled with your precious word, my God. Let us never, let us go back empty-handed, my God. My Father, the time we put ever in you, my God, in your word, it is impossible to go back empty-handed. It is not even possible, my God, that we come and we go back empty-handed, my Father. Let us take the water from within, my Father, what you have filled within each one of us, my God. Let us quench our thirst, my Father, with the water that you have instilled in us, my God. I praise you. I thank you, Lord, that every day, my God, it's a new beginning, my God. We are so blessed, my God, to be graced with your word, my God. We are so blessed, my God, that freely we come, my God, and we are blessed with your holy word, my God. We are collecting all the spiritual arsenals, my God, to fight all these challenges in our life, my God. As our fight is, my Father, not against flesh and blood, my Father, but the dark forces of the spiritual world, my God. I thank you, I praise you, I glorify your name, my God. And we close this prayer, giving you all the glory, reverence, and honor 
in Jesus precious mighty and holy name amen and amen amen amen, amen. praise god amen. brother maxwell thank you so much for that beautiful prayer and look at what my god has done to my brother maxwell he was down with the throat he could hardly speak and today he's also saying the prayer and look at what the lord has done praise god thank amen. you jesus thank you jesus praise god praise god